The wilderness means many different things to different people. To some, it might mean the sight of a lush, green forest. Others like to float on the water in a boat. But for me, it means the thrill of self-reliance and roughing it out of civilization. The thrill of cutting out on your own and answering to none other than the will of Mother Nature. So for a meaningful new personal challenge, I tried to see if I could survive in Project Zomboid completely independently, outside of civilization. You may remember, if you've been around my channel for a while, I used to run a large multiplayer server for Zomboid. And although I wasn't a player on the server, I was an admin. I had the most fun teleporting from player to player and watching what kinds of interesting things people were building. Although a lot of my players eventually got tired or frustrated, reasonably so, and left when their characters died, that's just the way the game works, there were a few small groups of players who fortified some cabins secret to most, but hidden well enough away in the woods, and trekked back and forth on looting runs to and from civilization. Sometimes they fought other players, sometimes they even died, but this made for some of the drama. No one could ever quite challenge them since their bases were so well hidden in the mysterious brush of the woods. Even I, as an admin, had some trouble finding out where they were located. What chance did any other player have then in subverting or fighting these factions? This game invites creativity. I decided to try it for myself since we're anticipating the near release of Project Zomboid's multiplayer, and I never tried living completely independently of civilization. There's still so many secrets to be found, so many systems to be explored, and it reminds me of the creativity that inspired me to first get into PC gaming, and that it's something that invites player curiosity. Day 1. I started by creating my character. I selected the occupation of Park Ranger because it's well suited to the woods. And I had a rather extensive list of traits. Illiterate, because I won't be reading any books. Obese, because I have plenty of weight worth losing. Claustrophobic, because I won't even be spending any time indoors. Hard of hearing and short-sighted, because I just don't think they make much of a difference. Sunday driver, because I won't have a car. Unlucky, because I won't be doing any looting. And pacifist, because I'll rarely be using weapons anyway. For traits to help me out in the wild, I took cat's eyes for night vision. Dexterous, because I'm going to be pretty depressed. It'll help me if I can transfer inventory items faster. Outdoorsman so the rain doesn't affect me. Iron gut for eating potentially dangerous food. Nutritionist to help me understand the food I'm eating. Former scout and herbalist for the foraging and knowledge of things I might gather in the woods. And handy to speed along my construction. I decided to name my character Henry David Thoreau after the author, spending his time on Walden Pond. To this, I would liken my retreat. I spawned in on the first day at a river. No boats along the shore to be seen, but that was beside the point. This could guide my run and give me a sense of place. It was a lucky spawn too, because you can spend days searching through the woods. Sure enough, in Project Zomboid, there are zombies, and it was actually lucky to find one right away. Being morbidly obese, I may be unfit, but I am still strong. A lucky first battle. I grabbed the wristwatch, and I donned all of the clothing. The sneakers would be most essential. Putting on the clothes, while it doesn't seem like such an essential find, if you don't manage to cover your feet early on, you can die of cuts. But after the fight, my clothes were covered in blood. I walked to the river and I washed off my clothing. Since it was still summer and there wasn't any fear of temperature going down, this was fine to do for now. I rid my clothing of blood, and I actually looked civilized. We need to consider what are our main needs. Food, water, shelter. There's a host of other things to consider. Food. With my stat selections, I did have a good foraging stat to start with. Not only that, but we had a strong experience boost on foraging. I maintained a sense of direction by walking along the river and looking for places to forage in the woods. Sure enough, a few items, some stones, tree branches, but that was it. This is a nomadic lifestyle. Finding a body of water is useful because you can store everything by the shore. You don't lose your sense of where you are or get lost. Foraging is tiring work and it ups your thirst in the game. We also found a variety of berries. None of these were poison berries. A lot of the herbs and plants you can find in the woods can be used medicinally. But sure enough, foraging is very thirsty work. And most herbs don't quench thirst. I foraged until later on in the day, around mid-afternoon, finding ginseng and a few other items. It wasn't a lot, but what could quench my thirst? Violets would sate my hunger, but they lack in fats. Berries also lack in fats, but they can slightly quench your thirst. I sat on the ground eating raw berries. Fun fact, if you have a bowl, you can eat poison berries and make them fun in a salad. But you can't make a bowl in nature, so I was just stuck there eating them. When the feast was through, I had filled my belly, and I'd only just barely quenched my thirst. It was still coming back. In the woods for only eight hours. I may not look the likes of a woodsman, but I've managed to keep myself in good repair. And of the three main needs, food, water, and shelter, I had satisfied food, at least in the short term. I would still lose weight, but at least I was safe for tonight. 
Water was next to me, but did I dare drinking straight out of the river? I would have to wait for something safer. And I decided to forgo drinking. Having that pile by the riverside, I could confidently run my way through the woods and forage copiously throughout the woods. Such treasures did I find therein. By the end of the day, I was exhausted. I had done nothing but foraging for about 12 hours. I laid out all my wittings on the ground and tried to categorize them. Exhausted, thirsty, and tired. I had collected 21 berries throughout the day. I used all of them to solve the thirst problem, but they wouldn't make me fat. Certainly not. I had done something to it, but still I couldn't afford to sit there eating berries all day. With that I opened up my crafting menu. I took a chipped stone and a tree branch I had found and crafted a spear. I equipped it. One of the most dangerous things in the wilderness would be to have zombies nearby but not see it before I go to sleep. So I wanted to make sure that they came to me. Sure enough, a little ways inland, a foe. It was only one, but that would be enough to kill me in my sleep. Gone. I collected the clothing and ripped it up for usage in my fires. These would make good rags. During the fight, my spear broke and I had to take the rest out by foot. Unfortunately, obesity doesn't do you any favors in combat, but I dispatched the rest of them. I collected the rags and I felt safe. I dropped my broken spear, and although the water was tainted, I could still wash myself in the river, so I did before nightfall. I crafted another spear to defend myself from anything that might come at night. And then I built a stone axe. Now I had sheets with which I could craft it, as well as a stone hammer. I donned the spear on my back, and then I slept by the shore. I might not have had any cover, but I at least had a sense that there were no zombies nearby. I left myself to the will of Mother Nature. When I woke up in the morning, it was 7 a.m. Still groggy and extremely thirsty, I needed to find something to make water safe. I made my way back into the woods. Finally, I'd found it. Lemongrass. Eating enough lemongrass could save you from drinking bleach. I laid it out with my whole collection on the ground. Violets, berries, stones, twigs, grape leaves, mallow, ginseng. It all had use. Nothing else could neutralize poison. So to end my thirst, I drank from the river. Now I'd wait. I decided that this was a safe solution. Just keep searching for lemongrass and you can drink all the tainted water you need. Incidentally, since I had the spear on my back, I found I could start spearfishing. And so that I did. And for a few hours I spearfished. It took time and it certainly wasn't a quick or easy process, but I was safe from the area. I had started off with no fishing skill whatsoever too, but even I was able to catch a few small fish, gain some basic experience. True, it did take me the entire day to catch two measly fish, but what else was I doing out in the wilderness? I also caught shoes, and finally a big bass. This was enough to get me to stop fishing just before nightfall. It wasn't a very eventful day, and I was still thirsty and very hungry. Since I was overweight, I ate berries, but berries just don't have the caloric needs to sustain someone's weight. The fish Fish are richer in macronutrients, and they come in a greater variety for any dieting needs. And while you'd think that you would need to eat a fish, hot, right? You'd need to cook it? No, it was the golem lifestyle, and I ate the entire big bass. 145 grams of fats. Would it sustain my weight? And in fact, my weight was sustained. At least up until the winter, I could sustain this lifestyle. But I was, again, completely exhausted. I'm no natural fisherman, and this was a hard day of work. I dropped my fish prizes on the ground, and I went back to nature with my stone axe on my back to cut down some trees. I knew what I was doing next. I would need to use the last of my energy for the day to fight off any zombies, so I called out. I ventured deeper into the woods until I felt confident that there weren't any zombies around. The next phase of my journey would require a lot of wood. It would take two hatchets, but I would get one tree's worth of logs out of this. Sure enough, my first axe broke before I downed the tree. You need to use tricks to remember where you were in nature, so I placed that broken axe nearby. I came back and finished off the tree. There lay on the ground a haul of four logs, two tree branches, and some twigs. I took them on my back. Even using only the materials found in nature, you could erect a wood wall, uh, or rather, a log wall, with just what you have in nature, including zombie clothing. I would place one of these just on the shore. It was easy enough to fashion. It didn't give me much experience, but a little bit in carpentry was enough. It couldn't defend me from zombies, but it could at least give me a little bit of cover to sleep behind so they wouldn't see me. Weary from the day, I slept. I arose on the third day at about seven o'clock. Curiously enough, natural cycles of sleep seemed to be kicking in, and now I had a construction at last. But there was still more to do. I would need a lot more wood, and I would need to do a lot more grinding for the next part. I checked out a clearing, the woods. Both of these places were fine, but they weren't fully safe from other players. 
And while I had made it all this way with nature, I did afford myself one luxury. Some nails and a saw. I figured that was okay. The original wall was fine, but you need nails if you want to do a lot more. There's a lot more room than anyone knows out on the water in Zomboid. Even with the box of nails and the saw, this would be very labor intensive. I got to constructing more axes. I would be building a dock next. Now it didn't matter my bodily condition, I had a goal to motivate me. And so, downing more trees, my axe condition gradually improved and I could do even more work. Not using up as many axes and getting more out of each one. I could saw the logs in place and make planks of them. Just two trees made for more planks than I could even carry on my back. I began building a dock out onto the water. While it wasn't safe yet, it would help me gain distance from the zombies. I built that walkway far out onto the river. During the process, my hammer ironically broke. Before I knew it, I was well out on the river. Not so far, but I could keep building out my dock, in theory, to a place where no player would ever even be able to spot it from view distance. And I could see nothing but river as far as I went out. Now I saw nature not as a threat, but as a means to improve myself while I was exiled here. A way to improve my skills. In the forest, cover from other players and zombies. In fact, I probably didn't even need all of the traits I started with. I think almost anyone could do this. The one thing that was always difficult to find was chipped stones. Most of my forage runs, I needed them, but I was gathering up a whole library of other resources beyond me. I hate a whole bowl worth of berries. Now there was no fear because I had more than enough food to keep me sustained. Curiously, I found that with my current tools, I could still disassemble one of these walls. And so I did. Food, water, and shelter. As for food and water, I had met the needs in the short term and the long term. But shelter is always still a concern. And as I made my way out onto the lake, I thought about various setups that I could use to protect my dock from both zombies and other players. And so with that, I walked out onto the dock, and I made my way out to sleep. I slept on the ground again for another night. I went to bed around 6 p.m. and I woke up before the crack of dawn. Fortunately, you still can fish on the dock. In the morning, I thought I'd keep improving my fishing skills, so I went fishing to see what came up at night. Would any different kinds of fish be out? Once you get a hang of it, everything is sort of a meditative process in nature. I got some socks so I could keep replacing my clothing with just whatever I found in the river. At this point, a bit more of the grind kicked in. But to tell you the truth, it is a long process, and it is a bit of a grind. I did level up in foraging, which was a help, but it still takes a very long time. And I found a lot more of what I didn't need than what I did. A couple of crickets, too. While you could, in theory, go out to the other side of the river and have a very secret base, what I had in mind was something more maritime. And once I could manage it, I built myself a stairway up into nothing. I wouldn't actually end up using this first one, but this next part took a little bit of figuring out. But if I could cut myself off via stairways, I would separate myself off from the zombies on land. Finally, a little bit of ingenuity led me to a design that would make me safe from all zombies. I could finally rest easy. Food, water, and shelter now. Later on, I could implement something like this on the shore, too, if I wanted. There's still just enough things in Zomboid that make it weird and wacky and make me like it, even for all its flaws. It's a lot of work, but if you really wanted to make something like this happen, you could create an entire fortress on a river. Corridors filled with secrets, packed to the brim with weapons. But if you ever got it to happen, the end result could be something amazing, something that was a splendor to behold. I hope that this inspired some ideas or creative thinking in Zomboid, because I think that this is the type of game that lends itself to that. Something that just makes games intrinsically fun, and reminds me of the curiosity with which I explored them in youth.